Hello everyone, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, what I want to show you guys is something really complex. Uh, for example, I mean we're, we're skim coating a house now that is possibly 100 years old or real close to 100 years old. Uh, notice the cracks here. Can you zoom in and see those cracks? That is one of the most cracked up houses I have seen. And if you watch what we do, you know I've seen a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the cracks on this house are uh, pretty amazing. What we're going to do is, um, what they did to uncover such cracks is these is they pressure or sandblasted the house. They did the ferro system on it. They used sand and glass. They had to tent the whole house because it's outlawed this uh, sandblast here in California, 2016. You see the cracks there. We've had nasty cracks everywhere. A couple of places I reinforced, say like this one with corner aid, and then we caulked some cracks prior that were really bad and what we're doing is we're doing an unusual system here guys it's uh, it's called a BMI 690 reinforced fibered cement that's a mouthful isn't it and it's got lime in the Portland cement you mix it all up in a machine and we'll, we'll go around here beautiful fellows beautiful uh, you want to mix up a little bit John let me show these folks how we do this and by the way guys the material we're using has got a lot of lime in it, and I've already covered a video. I, it took me an hour, and I covered lime plastering, and we showed how, the what's, the haves, and all about lime plastering, so I won't go over that. But the material we're using here, we're using a D30. where They have D20s, D30s, and big silos, and actually we can mix it with our own mixer, but like all same-day materials, and I'm talking about all the materials that say you can mix and apply the scratch and brown the same day you can't over mix so we're, we're not uh, taking any chances we're using the correct machine which gets every mix a perfect consistency uh, you want to go ahead and show that kind of wet looking but that'll work anyway um, let me show you the material we're using good job John I got a, this is not a very complicated mixer to use. Uh, I mean, John's used it many times, and he's a pretty smart guy. You probably even know the, the, the answer to that old joke, John. Why, did, why can't dinosaurs talk? They don't have any vocal cords. Cute. They're dead, John. That's why they can't. Anyway, here, here's the material we're using. Uh, this stuff here, you see right here, fibers. It's a BMI 690 fiber. And it says here, do not overmix. Why? There's about 20 materials that are rampant right now. They're just everywhere. All the Home Depots, the, the Lowe's, they all sell these same day materials. All of them, guys, you can't mix over three, three to five minutes. That's why we got this machine here. Again, John has been using this uh, many, many times. We've done videos on how to use it too in the past. By the way, that Lime video I was talking about, or the video where John actually explains how to use this, or Jason is on the camera, I'll put it in the link below. Now, what we're doing here is what, you might say, well, gee whiz, why are you using this material? Because this material has got Lime, and it's got the Portland plaster. Why use a Portland plaster based with Lime? I'll tell you, because see, here's Portland plaster. Uh, we did this chimney like four years ago. And it, it's got some cracks. Why is this house so cracked? Well, the sandblasting had a lot to do with it, but there's underground streams everywhere. We're on a mountain. In fact, we're, we just had a two-year drought. I said 2016 earlier. A two-year drought, even at the end of the drought, during the drought, after two years, there was still water underneath this building. So the building is constantly moving, and I can go over why buildings crack, as I've done in... 10 videos, why the crack, there's a hundred different reasons and all of them are based on movement. So this building is moving a lot. So with this 690 BMI material, it has the lime in it. Lime actually fluctuates a bit more. So with the lime, it gives it more, uh, more flexibility. So that's why we're using it. Uh, what we're about to do now is we're finishing the front here. We'll show you how to apply it too. And by the way, since I'm on this particular product you can do one pass and it's best to do one pass and if you're going over say paper and wire and you go one pass 
Seven eighths of an inch thick. Yes, you can do that. If you read the bags, it says one pass, and I've used it many times before. I've purchased silos that are 28 feet tall with 20 tons in it. We've shot houses with Tommy guns or pumps, and we've hand applied it. Here, are we going seven eighths thick? Not necessary. We're going about anywhere between a quarter to three eighths to a half inch, just depending on what we have here, because we're trying to give this building some stability. Now, could you color code this building just like this? Yes. It's not going to give it any structural strength. And the product we're using does give it a lot of structural strength. But is it going to stop this house from cracking? No product can do that, guys. It's just, it'll give it a lot of strength. But it, if the house is going to lift and drop, no product is going to do that. Nor is engineering, say, 20 tiers or piers underneath the house and spending $30,000 to stabilize it. I've seen folks do it, and those houses still crack because you cannot judge what's underneath the house. 20, 30 feet deep, you got rivers, lakes sometimes, all kind of weird stuff. Anyhow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get set up, and I'll show you how we apply this material because it's really sticky. And you folks who call me and say, gee, Kirk, I, I just got a, an email, and he said, hey, I, I want you to uh, give me a cost to skim coat my cinder block and he says I have all the the bags of uh, La Habra here for a, a smooth finish and I said guys I can put six to seven coats of La Habra uh, color coat smooth finish on it it's still going to hairline crack in all the joints and when it rains you're still going to see that you need to at least skim coat first and this is an excellent product to skim coat say a house for a, a Santa Barbara finish and it's an excellent product just to do what we're doing now and just a skim coat. And what is, again, a skim coat is simply a coat between one quarter inch to, say, a half inch. That's a skim coat. A scratch coat is three eighths. A brown coat is three eighths. Technical now, but you go a little bit more or less each time. Anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, set the rest of this. And I'll tell you a little bit more about this product and why we're using it and show you how sticky it is and things of that nature. All right, guys, I'll try to give you a little demonstration about how this stuff works. You see, again, this, this takes some practice on mixing. Uh, let's see here. Kind of like, okay, what you want to do is put it on. And remember, guys, you, you want to give it some depth. Um, you know, to, to say a quarter inch, that's about the least amount you want to do. Uh, I'm going a little heavier than that because I want to give some structural integrity to this. Now, you see in the kind of cracking we have here. So with that kind of cracking, you know what, a little bit extra. It's not going to hurt, guys. A little bit more, in this case, a little bit better. So. You can see though how sticky this stuff is. It's very sticky. So they say on the bags that with this particular material, it's, it's quite different from any of the traditional ones that we show often. You're better off putting it on one thick coat than say a scratch and a brown because it is engineered for that. When, they, when I saw this house here, they said, well, gee, Kirk, um, which material would you recommend? Of course, I right away, I because of my knowledge with lime plastering uh, and just regular all-around plastering, I said, well, gee, let's go with the BMI uh, 690. And, of course, I got the fibers just because it doesn't cost too much extra to get fibers, guys. And it does add, just, you know, adds a little bit more strength. Fiberglass has uh, been used for years. And before fiberglass, they used horse hair, human hair, you name it, pig hair, uh, anything to reinforce this stuff. So, you get an idea, and this stuff, again, guys, it's kind of gluey, so it wants to stick to the trowel. What I generally do is I'll put it on. We're going in a tight spot here where I got holes in the ground. I'm trying to avoid it stepping in it and falling into 
the great doom down there, but what we want to do is get it about as smooth as we can and then we can come back. There's, there's a lot of ways to smooth it out, even more than this. Landmine around here. Okay, so I'm putting this guy on here. And what I generally do when I'm using this uh, 690 um, is I'll allow it to set. And this stuff you, you really cannot, or you're not supposed to, use a green sponge float. You guys see me use green sponge floats a lot. Say like to, uh, uh, in order to float it, this really you're not supposed to float it because now you're disturbing the pack. I'm just gonna finish this little piece right here and we'll, cause we're a little bit busy on that other side. I got a landmine under me as is, let alone go to that side. So, let me show you one more thing, guys. Okay, getting it on there, coming down. That's just get it, get it as smooth as you can. What I'll generally do sometimes is either grab my pull trowel. Now I generally wet it first. And this is after I let it set for about an hour. This material, it doesn't set real fast. So I'll let it set and I'll come back. It's kind of like doing a Santa Barbara smooth mission finish. You just, you allow it to set a little bit and don't disturb the packs. The packs are important. And when I say packs, that's just leave it alone and let it set. And you come back and just trial out uh, all the imperfections and all depends too on what type of finish we're putting on it uh, with this particular material um, a color coat can be applied within seven days seven days that's uh, that's pretty good most most uh, companies when you do a scratch in or a base coat this is a base coat product guys it cannot be used for a finish coat that when you're doing a, a base coat with most Portland types of finishes, you allow it to set about two weeks minimum. So this, it saves you a week if you're in a hurry. Us, uh, I'm rarely in a hurry, so when folks often write and say, Kirk, I could have did that so much faster, and I say, man, you have at it. I'm in no hurry. We take our time, we do it right. Plus, uh, you know, you might call me, Nervous or quirky, I prefer to take my time and get it done right, then go fast and uh, be in a hurry. I'm in no hurry. I'm rarely in a hurry when we're doing these videos because I got enough guys here. We can take our time, do it right. And this way I'm not, uh, with my nervous nature, stressed out at night thinking, man, you hurried up on that. So we're in no hurry, guys. We take our time and there's no crime to be nervous and take your time. The only crime is trying to speed things up in order to make a dollar. We don't get paid to, to make these videos and we don't get paid by any of these cements we use or show, but I do try to show everything that we do now because you folks ask to see them. Anyway, we're gonna go back and we're gonna do a few other things and then we'll show you the conclusion of it and show you the whole house. All right, guys, we are complete. Let me see if I missed anything. This house was pressure washed yesterday or the day before that's what adheres a new uh, base coat to an existing brown coat, suction. And here's what you do when you're done with it. If, depending on the sun, and this is everybody, um, you know, you gotta decide how much water based on the day. If it's a super hot day, you're gonna be hosing this down continuously. And we just put this on, you can see the outline of the chimney, how about that? because that is still sucking up more moisture. And just use common sense when hydrating a house. Anyway, uh, there's our mixer right there. We're bringing that, that sucker back. And Mr. Vocal Cords, I thank you for that tip. Anyway, my name is Kirk Jason on the camera. We thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. 
Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.